This is the first in a series of short introduction videos to TDI-7. Now, not all aspects of the system will be covered here, but there are other materials online to learn more. We're going to be reading information from an SQL database, joining additional data from an LDAP directory, and then writing this to a target system. Now, a key approach in using TDI is to simplify a problem, and we're going to simplify ours by replacing the target system with an XML file. And in this video, we're also going to simplify further by not doing the join. This means I'll be creating one integration rule, called an assembly line in TDI, which is made up of two connectors. First, a JDBC connector to read information out of my database, and a file system to create my file. Since the file system connector works with byte streams, I'm also going to use an XML parser to format that. I'll start by creating a new project. This will be TDI 7 101. Once in the project, I can then create an assembly line. This will be our DB to XML assembly line. Then I'll add my first component to feed data into the assembly line. I'll type JDBC limit the list here, select that component, and rename it to people, and then set the mode to iterator. Pressing next brings me into the configuration screen, and I'm going to reach out to an ODBC data source I have set up on my machine, and to the table called people. When I press finish now, we're back in the assembly line. And from here, I can discover which attributes are available by using the Connect Next buttons in the Scheme area. Now I'm stepping through the data live. Then I can select those attributes in the schema that I want to bring into the assembly line and drag them left into the input map. These are rules for bringing data into my flow. And I can rename any of these by clicking on them and editing in place. Now by clicking on the data flow tab or feed or on the show mapping, I can see all the attributes being brought in and being written out for my flow. Then we'll add our output connector, file system. We'll just call this one output and leave the mode as add only. I press next and then I configure where I want this one to write. I can either select a directory, but I'm going to just use a relative path, which will drop it in my solution directory, and we'll call this people XML. When I press next again, I select the parser. And here we'll just choose the XML parser. Now the last step is to tell this connector which of the attributes that are in the flow to write out. And I'm going to do that by pressing here on the add button in the input map and selecting map all attributes. So anything in the flow will be written out to our file. Then I'll start the assembly line using the Run button. Since this project is by default associated with my test server, my default server, it's going to dispatch this project to that server and tell it to run that one assembly line. And here I get statistics from the run. By control clicking on any one of the components, it brings me back into the assembly line at that component. Instead of going out and checking the file, I can use the data browser to examine it interactively here on screen. Down in the details section, I see the first 5,000 bytes, and this looks pretty good. But I can also apply the parser and read it as structured information like this. So the first step here in our example is completed. In the next videos, we'll be looking at how to transform data, how to add business logic to your assembly line, and how to use JavaScript to extend and even override the built-in behaviors of TDI.